We're back, and it's time for the big question. But first, a mini question for you at home. As Dutters is finding out on Tinder, uh, let us know. Ryback, would you slape right? He's got the arms. He's got the arms. He's the big guy. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? And also, if you uh, swiped right on Ryback last night, let us know in Pittsburgh. Because <laughs> he was in town. Whoa. Whoa. Let us know if Ryback really is the big guy <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> but actually what's going on uh our uh big question for this week is actually being presented by ba, ba, ba. bobby fj town thank you thank you hi, filling everybody. in hi bobby filling in for uh mr mr box who is uh taking a hiatus for the month of march it's box it's it's the box hi- I'm, i can't work i can't work that into a thing uh bobby what is our big question of the week all right Gonna get a little controversial here. Oh no! <gasps> With Bill Lamont resigning. Oh no! We didn't talk. Do about you that. think that WWE dropped the ball when it came to his style of training by not getting rid of him and letting him resign, or do you think there is still room for this kind of training since concussions and injuries have become a more pertinent issue? Now let's, let's be clear. What is he specifically accused of? Uh, racism, homophobia. <laughs> As in, like, things he would yell at people yeah. during training sessions. In- injuring bullying. talent. And the injuring is, like, all, all I know is in- somebody supposedly had... Weaponry. What? <laughs> what? He had a gun in his office. Oh, tax geez. evasion. Ta- oh, tax evasion? That's a new That's one. That's what they got Al Capone on. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Indecent exposure. Yeah, inde- well, for other people. Not himself. Um, and being Bill DeMott. Yes, being Bill DeMott. Hugh Morris. Hugh Morris. I was going to say, this is not humorous at all. General Erection. <laughs> yeah, we can go on and on and on. But this is no laughing matter, Bobby. Basic garbage person. Yes. <laughs> Are you wants to go first? What's the question? Yeah, what's, <laughs> the question? Wait, wait, do we support this okay. guy? I'm all in. The first, part, the first part of the question was, do Swipe you right. WWE drop the ball? When it came to his style of training, by not getting rid of him sooner. Okay. And the, and the second part of the question is: Do you think there's still room for this kind of training? Not so much like the racism and stuff like that. Just the aggressive style, like maybe uh, uh, I'll go Stu first. Hart or or, I or like uh, I Hart or um, I'll go first on this one. Okay. Uh, hold on. Um, go ahead, Riz. Hi. But by the way, I I came on later, so you guys didn't see me come on. Um, being the one who's seen a lot of like training in his days as I was in high school football for about a year Mm -hmm. and um, I can tell you right off the bat that this training style isn't just Bill DeMott's training style no this is going on everywhere there's even a coaching bad tv show now starring Ray Lewis. Uh, but to answer the question... Allegedly. Yes, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, to answer the question, uh, they did what they had to do because they got caught doing... Because he allegedly got caught doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And it, it sucks because we've seen Tough Enough. Mm-hmm. He was... If... if if that was his toned down version of himself, mm-hmm. what's not toned down? Like we haven't seen video yet of something like that, and it is it, just like. But like I said, this this doesn't happen just to build a mod. This happens to every high school, every college, mm-hmm. every professional team. They all have that one psychotic coach that just tries to push the line and sometimes they get caught and sometimes they piss off the wrong person and they get released Mm -hmm. either justified or not. That's what, that's what happened. And that, that's pretty much all I got to say about that because that's what I've been taught before. Just that beat down attitude of, you're no good or something like that. It, it, it's it's hard on your mental state, but mm-hmm. some people actually do get motivated by that, mm-hmm. as strange as that sounds. 
And I think I think the style, I mean, wrestling's hard. I mean, some of the things that we hear when we're talking with a lot of people on the like Indie Mayhem show, people that have gone to Japan, is, you know, their tough style. And I don't know about abusive, mm-hmm. you know, the drill sergeant but it is tough. It is harrowing is physically taxing right um and 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 a lot a lot of they say a lot of you know wrestlers at home you know in in america are not doing nearly as much in their training now i think there's definitely a difference between that and the things he's being accused of uh, uh garza's in there saying he was kicking broken legs punching guys with concussions sexual harassment mm-hmm. oh, um, there's no there's different. no place for that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah there's no place for that let's make that clear but is there room for stuff training tough training yes because getting there is going to staying there is going to be tough you know, you talk about the they're, politics and, and everything. It's going to be tough. And, and, and I think that they're trying to mentally prepare people for this kind of stuff. And they're like, well, if you can't handle this, you're never going to handle the road. You're never going to handle day to day. And it should be more the day, the, the, the physical stuff, certainly. Um, now, now, the difference, I think, is the commonplace, the, the uh, homophobic, terms and the racial slurs like those are things that are past their time you just can't do that these days and you know the thing is you can't do that in a public company you know um but generally you probably shouldn't do that you know you you still hear it unfortunately some places but you shouldn't be hearing that in a uh, publicly traded company's training center in, in orlando florida Right. You could maybe be hearing that in like some a boxing training facility in, in, in the hood well, in New York, you know. But um, I mean, it, it's just it's not it's just not acceptable anymore socially. And, and it's past that. And it's not going to be acceptable when it gets out of the, the gym. So um, next. Um, I, I kind of I, I, I agree. Yes, uh, it was a fault on them that I didn't, they didn't react sooner. Uh, uh, mainly because these are allegations that have been circulating for a long time, uh, similar allegations, uh, even from like dating back to when DeMott was training uh, people in Deep South wrestling. Um, you know, there's that photo that got leaked of, uh, I think it was like either Zack Ryder or Kurt Hawkins or one of the two, like being forced to like strip naked and like shove their ass in another person's face or something like that. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, well, that's hazing. Zach that's Ryder. hazing at that point. It, 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 it's very, it was a hazing sort of um, uh, atmosphere that I think is the main reason why there's such a problem uh, with the lots training specifically. And to attest to kind of what Sorg is saying about um, how, you know, a tougher training style or um, like you mentioned, the Japanese training style, there's actually a really good um, documentary if anybody ever looks it up. It's actually on YouTube in parts um, called Gaia Girl. It talks about the uh, the training of the female wrestlers. Can, can you say that, can you say that pronunciation again? And you broke uh, up. It, it's uh, spelled G A E A Gaia uh, Gaia Girls. If you just search it on YouTube, I think it's in a bunch of parts. And uh, it's about that intense sort of training style, training younger students to make their debut in Japanese women's wrestling. And there's actually this really intense scene where they're throwing drop kicks, and and she's not throwing them correctly. So her trainer throws off the ropes and drop kicks her right in the mouth, and she's busts open everything but it's, it's very much from a standpoint of if you aren't up to snuff when you get into that into that ring the people that you're facing you are facing will do much worse to you mm-hmm. it's comes from that sort of mentality not from a jock i want to exert my power over you mentality um and i think that's where training like demotts and and training as sort of showing it right there um, training like Demotts and training like that kind of is, is very different. No, no one wants people to take it easy on them. Mm-hmm. I don't think you don't learn anything from getting, you know, you know, being held by the hand or anything. But there's professionalism and there's certain things that go into it that, you know, play a factor that that lead to a healthy working environment. And and with Demotts history, that just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, you also have to remember, it's kind of different from high school sports and college sports because with wrestling, it's you're literally taking someone else's life into your hands as well as your own. Yeah. So it's not, it's not just about um, being physically tough for yourself. It's about always remaining focused on the task at hand because if you do something wrong just because you're slowing down or you're slacking, you could severely injure someone. You could kill them. 
Like, <laughs> like you almost have to, you almost have to have kind of a baptism by fire method of training for it because if you don't have that, then you're just going to be sloppy in the ring and you're going to hurt someone. Like that's one of the things Bret Hart, one of his claim to fames is he never hurt anyone in the ring. And yeah. he probably had one of the most rigorous training schedules of anyone in the mm-hmm. business just because his dad would literally bring people down and stretch them every single time they came to the house. Like, like you hear all the stories about the heart dungeon and everything, but the people who come out of there generally are like very safe, solid, efficient workers. Don't really hurt anyone unless it's a freak accident in the ring, but you never see him slack off or anything like that. Uh, Matt, you got any thoughts on this? Um, just kind of looking at it, like compare like Bill DeMott to like Bobby Knight, where oh, everybody knew what Bobby Knight was and, and how he was operating for years and years and years and years and years. And then finally it's the tipping point where it's one thing too many and it's, you know, it's one story too many. And then the public opinion shifts and the media spotlight points at you. And if you're a public institution or a publicly traded company, you're left with absolutely no choice. So it doesn't matter whether Bill DeMott did it or didn't do it. Once you're under that intense pressure, you have no, you have no, way out of that corner, you know, from a public relations perspective, you got to get rid of him. He's got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I mean, just talking about like, it, it's interesting because hearing about different trainers um, and you hear about guys like Bill DeMott who are extremely intense and cross the line from what you hear about. And then you hear about, like Lance Storm, and you never hear anything like that about Lance Storm. Mm-hmm. Now, does that mean Lance Storm is like, you know, a, a nice trainer? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he gets really intense too, um, but I would assume that he also knows there's a line that you don't cross, mm-hmm. and that's the reason that you never hear anything about Lance Storm. Like you, Mike was just talking about Stu Hart. When did you? Did, Stu Hart trained a billion guys, and I don't remember anyone ever saying a bad thing about Stu Hart, about the way he trained guys. Sure, you heard about some guys getting pushed to the limit, um, but hell, there are stories like Hulk Hogan tells a story about getting his leg broke when he was still training. Mm -hmm. For absolutely, if you're going to believe Hogan's story, for absolutely no good reason other than to you know, a different era for sure, but to protect the business and, and, and see if he's business, serious, see how tough you are. And I think for, a, you know, just from the outside looking in that if you're a trainer in this business and someone else said, and you are going to be trained to take another person's life in your hands in that ring, you have got to be at an extremely high level of dedication, discipline, um, and, and how do you how do you cultivate that in somebody, um, especially if it's not there from the very start? Mm-hmm. I don't know. How do you motivate them? I mean, I guess there are different ways to do it. Some guys throw chairs. <laughs> Some guys yell and scream. And other people may have different ways of pushing buttons that are also successful. And maybe they're all successful in their own twisted way. But I, I think the bottom line is that, and one point I wanted to make, um, is that when, when, when we're talking about Bill DeMott, really how much does WWE lose in the long run by letting him go? Like what is Bill DeMott's track record as a <laughs> trainer of professional wrestlers that WWE could not possibly live without this man? I, I don't well, well, see well, 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 according I mean, Someone to, can explain it to me. I mean, uh, a lot of these guys in NXT came – you know, pre-made, and it was what a finishing school, basically, well, right? Well, well, to according according to Bill DeMott's words, allegedly he had to retrain Daniel Bryan. He wouldn't have been anything if it oh, wasn't him. And also, mm-hmm. it's it's not like they don't have other. They have the New Age Outlaws are there. Um, mm-hmm. they have Sarah Del Rey. Well, I believe uh, Jason Albert's actually going to be taking He's over. Right. Bill DeMott. Uh, Norman Smiley, uh, Sarah Del Rey. Yes, I mean, both friend of the show. It, it's not like they don't have, you know other talent there he was just the head guy i think they honestly even just got rid of him because they are having tough enough come back Mm -hmm. 
Like, honestly, I think if that wasn't a thing, Bill DeMott would probably still be working there. Right. Well, we'll also keep in mind, he, uh, Bill, Bill DeMott, uh, uh, he resigned. Uh, he resigned. He was yeah, they didn't fire him. Yeah. He resigned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean it wasn't without any Six prodding. one half dozen the other. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. Anybody else have a thought? Do you have um, a thought on this? I think uh, with a lot of – this isn't, like, a very – isolated incident as far as his behavior or a lot of like Riz was saying a lot of other people's behavior and I think if you hit a point where you can't cover it up anymore and it comes out and you have to deal with it like Matt said you can't just mm -hmm. let that yeah. slide at that point and then you got to go hey I think you should probably quit now before you get fired yeah. your choice also the fact that like so many workers like well-known workers were speaking out about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. I think really like uh Ethan Carter spoke <laughs> out mm -hmm. uh Tramparetta uh, Joey Ryan, who's I think one of the first to actually like make mm. note of him when he uh, went in for a tryout, a um, bunch of people. And, and yeah. I just wonder why it took so long for a lot of this to come out because those guys haven't been in the WWE system in a long time. It mm. only it only takes one to start that mm. snowball effect, right? And, and right. Yeah, I mean, like, what, what started things for? Um, sorry to interrupt you, but what started things with Bill Cosby? That's Same exactly principle at play. Yeah, mm -hmm. one person started that whole wave and now it just took build them away yeah and, and and the the one guy that did speak up he was saying about how build them he had like you know concussions are such a big deal now mm -hmm. um he he said he had a concussion and build them came in and asked him how he was doing and then he slapped him in the head <laughs> like an open hand slap oh. to the head like a, down on top of his head um another thing he said he would do would grab the ropes when the guys were in the ropes pull back and let it go and like it would hit their face hmm. um he said that uh one of his big targets was enzo um and he said that they have drills where they would drop enzo wrong everybody had to pick enzo up and drop him wrong oh that's so to show the wrong way to drop somebody oh jeez. yeah um among other things uh, but like matt was saying like Stu hart would do like he he wouldn't hurt somebody on purpose he would push them to see how far they could go mm-hmm Without being a dick and, and hurting, yeah. There's you know? there's a thin line between mm -hmm. good trainer and bad trainer. Yeah, because and I think I think the the end game in trying to teach teach somebody how to do something right is to make sure that injuries don't happen mm -hmm. down the line by intentionally exacerbating or causing injuries that completely mm -hmm. defeats the purpose of whatever you're trying. Another another funny thing about this, not funny, but um, somebody it's who, who matter, Bobby, <laughs> humorous. Somebody somebody who like. Basically said that uh, Bill Demont was doing the the absolutely wrong thing was Hardcore Holly, one of the most oh like, wow yeah. wrestlers in the ring. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. don't do this to people, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I thought that was like huge of Hardcore Holly to come out and like talk against Bill Demont. Um, well, he's also a trainer, which yeah, he knows that people are going to go to him mm -hmm. if he's safer than Bill Demont. Mm -hmm. And they yeah, know you're going to be some, right there. <laughs> some, some notes to things to the chat room, and we'll move on here. Um, but uh, Garza's uh, pointing out it came out in 2013, but everyone got fired again. Uh, if Ivelisse? Ivelisse? Ivelisse. 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 Yeah. Ziggler's brother, a bunch of guys got fired with it. Uh, going around for a while, again, tipping point. Um, oh, that's Matt. Hi, Matt. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Matt. <laughs> um, but yeah. He's trying to engage the chat room, Sorg. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but then let us know and what you way, thought. Cars Car yeah. uh, completely separate. Cars did say he would swipe right for Ryback. Yeah, so he actually started a hi hashtag yeah. swipe right for Ryback. So mm -hmm. you guys can have fun with that one. Uh, I would love to see that thing get trending on Raw or SmackDown this week. <laughs> um, but no, if you have any thoughts on this, we're going to put this question out. His uh, hashtag WMMS big question. And uh, the prize for this week, of course, is the show that just came out. The show that is going to be on digital download in the morning. I haven't even uploaded this thing yet, uh, but you can check out Cage Fury from this past weekend. Um, like I said, like we mentioned before, earlier in the show, including guys like Crimson there in the video, if you're watching on the video. Um, oh, he has a mask. <laughs> Ooh, no, it's face paint, actually. Oh, he has um, face paint mask. And he's holding in front of the show <laughs> Aiden Vale, by the way, in a very precarious position. Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> and so much more. Uh, but you'll get clear fill. Uh, hashtag WMS big, que big question. Let us know what you think about the Bill DeMont 
situation, and you have a chance to win that here next week on the show. Uh, so in the meantime, let's uh, you know let's mention something else. Speaking of indie wrestling and supporting some good trained people, and some of these people that maybe had to deal with this situation, unfortunately, ProWrestlingTees.com. Um, we have a store over there. You can go ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, and uh, you can.